All righty. Well, welcome everyone. Thank you for joining. I'm excited to kick off the Blaze Meter APM integration overview. Um, my name is Lauren Davison, but I'm going to be handing it off um, to Tim and Todd here soon. But before we start, I want to kick it off with a few announcements. So this webinar will be recorded and we'll be sending a follow up email with the recording um, today or tomorrow after this wraps and questions are encouraged. So feel free to send over the questions as we're going through the webinar in the chat. Uh, we'll have time to answer those once we wrap up. And then after the webinar ends, you'll be prompted to fill out a short survey, a uh, really quick 30 seconds, but your feedback really helps us um, with future webinars. So that would be great if you participate there. And with that, I'll hand it over to Tim and Todd. All right, so hello everybody. Thank you for joining. My name is Tim Higgins and I'm a solutions architect. I've been working with testing and APM monitoring for a little over 10 years, but I've been in the software business for a little over 25 years. Today, we're going to do an overview of the integration with Blaze Meter and APM solutions. The goal is to help you succeed on being proactive in your monitoring, getting to the core of the issue, and see why Blaze Meter with APM metrics give you more insights into your applications. So let's get started. When you do testing through your applications layers, such as your middle tier and database, you need a way to view what's going on. Well, APM Metrics gathers this information for you, usually in the form of an agent. And in that shell, APM Metrics with Blaze Meter gives you the complete view. <clears throat> Excuse me. We all know when an application is running slow or has issues. It's usually not because of the front end. It's usually because of the middle tier or the back end ran into an issue. You need all these metrics to get a complete view into your application. APM traffic with Blaze Meter allows you to predict spikes in your traffic, identify spikes before they overwhelm networks or servers, and assist you during preparing for random events that create a surge in demand, such as the one coming up soon, Black Friday. So let's go over some of the topics we're gonna to talk about. First of all, how to connect Blaze Meter to your APM solution. Why do you want more metrics? And why is getting a complete view of your application so important? Who should benefit from a complete view of the application? And finally, we'll cover some best practices on how to be productive or proactive with your metrics along the way. Now, for those new, we're going to talk a second about Blaze Meter. Why Blaze Meter? And what is Blaze Meter? Well, Blaze Meter was built for developers as well as testers and enables them to test web, mobile, microservices, and APIs throughout the software development lifecycle. It's pure SaaS. You only need a browser and you can calibrate over the web. It's 100% open source compatible, compatible with all the leading testing tools. You can drive masses amounts from more than 55 geolocations and from behind a firewall. Blaze Meter is massively scalable, and you can test more than 10 million virtual users concurrently. It facilitates continuous testing delivery that leads to a superior test coverage at speed. The product's reporting is highly comprehensive. It provides great insight into what is happening within your app. Its APM integration compatibility lets you see server-side KPIs, which is our main focus for today. It's covered up the entire platform is API based where you can kick off a test using the API call. You can stop a test using the API call. You can even pull the logs from the API call. You get it, right? You can do everything through an API. So let's talk about how to connect your APM solution to your Blaze Meter. But before we do that, let's look at out of the box integrations. Out of the box, Blaze Meter supports the following APM integrations New Relic. Used to be CA, but now Broadcom, DXAPM, Dyna App Dynamics, Dynatrace, CloudWatch, and of course the new Relic infrastructure. So let's go take a look at this. So I'm going to bounce over to my website. Now, for those who have never seen Blaze Meter, it's very simple. Go to blazemeter.com and click Start Testing Now. Now I have an account, and it's free to, to try, right? So I have an account. 
and we're going to click create test. Now I'm not going to cover any of this now. We're going to see this in a larger demo I'm going to do in a, after a few more slides. But with here, we're just going to look at this test. And again, we'll talk about this shortly. What I want to get to is avoid all this. Pretend like you don't even see it. Just behind the curtain. We're going to drop down to APM integrations. Here are the ones we talked about. New Relic, AppDynamics, DXAPM, which is now Broadcom, used to be CA, Dynatrace APM, CloudWatch, and New Relic. We're only going to talk about connecting. If I click on this, it says create a new key. I enter my keys and I connect. That's simple. If I go to APM, I can look at two-way integration. I can say I want a new one and I just get this information. If you want to know where this information comes from, we have a great help that is very useful for getting this information. But of course, most of this should be from the product that you're familiar with. For an example, if I'm doing, um, this is Broadcom. So if I'm doing Broadcom APM, uh, DX APM, then I shouldn't know this information from it. So we'll go ahead and close it. CloudWatch is the same, okay? Here, you just put in your keys. And again, all these work the same, right? They want some kind of communication. And if you've ever done any type of communication integrations, it is all the same. Right, so you'll get used to it. You'll know where your keys are, your counts, and that type of stuff. Very importantly though, don't lose your keys because um, then you have to come set up another one. Here's Dynatrace, right? Um, I think we do have a Dynatrace integration already. And of course the new Relic is the same one we have from before, but it's the same thing. Once well, account ID and your key. Again, usually you'd log into that system to get the key and then you would come back over here and enter it in. For an example, for the APM DX, it would be in your security tab. Okay, now we're saying that, let's jump back over to our slide deck and let's move on. Now, don't worry, we're going to do a bigger demo later where we see a lot of this in action. <clears throat> so why do we want more metrics and why is getting a complete view of your application so important? Well, we all know about that call we get from our customers about our website running slow. First thing we do as managers or whoever, we call up the web team and sure enough, our UI is running slow call the web team and say, hey, what's the problem? Well, the first thing they do is they spend hours to find out it's not the UI. So I always tell customers, time versus effort. What if I had a set of metrics that told me the load on my front end had issues because my database was having issues that day? Then that call would have been completely different. One of the goals of smart metric gathering is to cut down on finding an issue, also known as KPIs. So the concept of KPI, key point indicators, is really more of an alert or you need to know of an action based off of a metric. So what is the definition of a metric? Usually a metric is a single measurement in time. It could be 15 milliseconds or whatever, where it's gathering that data. I'm gonna group those together in some kind of connection, usually on a grid or a dashboard or something. So I have a grouping of metrics and now I wanna set a threshold. That threshold is your KPI. That threshold then tells me, you know, I'm running out of memory. What do I do? Oh no, I'll go fix the problem. But it boils down to getting the correct metric. Now we're saying that when something does go down, how much time and money do you spend just looking for the problem? Not the solution, the actual problem. So the big question is, what should I be looking at? More importantly, who should be looking? Now, realistically, everybody should be looking. Everybody who has you know, any kind of SharePoint or stakeholder into the metrics or the application, which is the business. 90% of the time, that's where the revenue is coming from. So technically, everybody should be looking. But more importantly, we're gonna break some out here. So infrastructure, architects, where if it's, you know, the architect can be software architect, it can be infrastructure architect, uh, network engineers, as they used to be called, developers, most importantly, the NOC. okay? So we're just gonna kinda, these are just some top metrics, and we're gonna see this when we do the demo. Your NOC should know about uptime, crashes, errors, and downtime. Realistically, your NOC needs a communication channel, okay? When something goes down, they need to know who to call, when to call, and how fast they can get in touch with them, right? So if, again, if my website's running slow, and if the NOC calls the website team, well, the website team's not thinking about the database, unless it's a, unless it's a, a deployment that had a script, that's another story. But instantly, they're gonna start looking at their stuff. And then, of course, they're going to dig into the code, which is going to involve your middle tier, where if it's web logic, web sphere, or just hard coding. And then they're going to involve the DB team, 
So hours later, look how much revenue you lost just because the knock didn't have the proper channel to call. Well, they did a good job. They did have the proper channel. They had the proper channel based off their knowledge because they didn't have the proper metrics to tell them who to call. So that's why it's important for NOC to get those metrics. Infrastructure. Now, again, uptime of main services, disk, memory, network, right? When you think of infrastructure back in the old days, right, it was physical. Um, you really were worried about running out of a hard drive space when it was only two gigs, right? Or even less than that, uh, you know, 256 or whatever. But these days, even if it's Docker and you're going through Kubernetes or using some cloud service like Amazon or Microsoft, you still have to monitor that. Infrastructure team still needs to know, you know, I, I went to a customer where they were down for days only because they didn't realize their log files was filling up their disk space. And that's really all it was. But they were too busy looking at the app, looking at the database. Nobody thought about looking at the physical servers. So that's why it's important for them to get that information as well. Then you go down to architects. Now, I'm a software architect by heart. I've been for years and I love metrics. When you think about architects, we want to, when we look at our application, we want to own that application that is ours, right? And we, and I don't mean that being selfish, but it is our responsibility, right? So we look at CPU, we look at disk, we look for memory leaks, we look for GC heap. GC heap, especially in the Windows world, is garbage collection, right? Um, it does it for you, but it doesn't always do it properly. And the concept is it should look like a saw, right? So your memory climbs and then it releases. It climbs and it releases. Well, guess what? If it doesn't release, you've got a memory leak, okay? And we'll talk about that towards the end when we get into some best practices. The other things you wanna look at too is your IOs, right? And you also, more importantly, wanna look at your threads. Um, you know, are your threads releasing? Are they spooled up waiting to happen? Are you using something like message queue, like WebSphere, right? So those are the things you wanna look at, or TIPCO, worst case. Um, but as developers, you kind of want to look at what architects look at, but at a smaller level. So I want to look at threads. Am I using asynchronism or am I just using direct threads, right? Um, and if I am using threads, CPU memory, and again, GC heap, back in the old days, if you hit your, your spike on your memory, or if you ran out of threads, then you got the blue screen of death. Now there was other things like IOs and things like that that caused the blue screen of death, but that was the number one reason was people would run out of memory and of course your system would crash. It still does, it's just you don't get the ugly blue screen. Well, very rarely you do. So with saying that, <clears throat> before we get into testing, let's set a little scope area. Let's talk a quick, um, you know, what is the testing we're doing, okay? That's fair. Now, with saying that, um, let's talk quickly on how BlazeMeter creates a performance test, especially for those who are new to BlazeMeter. So when you're doing performance testing, a lot of people are thinking, well, we think we can handle 50,000 users. We should, should we run a 50,000 user test? The answer is no, you should not. You should work your way up. If you have a goal of getting to 50,000 or 100,000, start with only 10% of the way there. Just get the test done at 50,000 or so and ramp it up slowly. In these initial tests you're running, you want to have a ramp and a ramp is starting from zero users to your max amount. How long does that take, okay? It should be gradual. The reason why is you want to give the system enough time to get into enough trouble that you can see symptoms and to know roughly where those symptoms appear. If you're in a rush to get to a large number of users, then you don't really know what load level you're currently facing problems. Start your ramps gradually and then build your tests up. You want to plan to do a series of tests and have the ramp up slow enough so that you can figure out where do things start going wrong. Now, pop quiz. What is a good duration for a test? Now, if you're cheating and looking at my screen, the answer is 45. So you want a good test to run for 45 minutes to an hour, and that's a really good performance test. Now, we're talking about the users in the ramp up test. A stress test is just as important as a performance test. We're going to look at how to run both the stress and the performance test in our, in our demo here shortly. But when you do a stress test, you want to create spikes just as your users would. Stress test is more about the users using your system. The system is likely to have some symptoms of strain when this happens. You want to run that test and then after the strain arrives, you want to scale back the load 
and see how well your system recovers. It's very important. It's really important to know not only that you can handle that spike, but that after the spike arrives, the system will recover. And the way I like explaining this, it's, it's pretty common sense if you think about it in the aspect of users. But imagine my wife called me up and says the car is making a ticking noise at 65 miles an hour. So I wouldn't take the car and shoot to 65, right? I would go to 45, see if I hear the noise. I would go to you know 55, see if I hear the noise. I would drive it a little bit and then I would speed up a little bit. So it's a way to get to the problem or see where the problem occurs so I would know where to focus on our application, okay? Now with saying that, we're gonna do a demo. Now I'm going to stop the slide deck for a second and we're gonna get back over here. This was the beginning of what we did a few minutes ago, but I'm actually gonna go from the actual beginning if I can, so you can see it from beginning to end. Now, if I click start, this is a lot of information here, a lot of information. I'm gonna use my buddy Todd's workspace, he's on the call. Um, but we could do a demo on probably just this by itself, right? But what you wanna do is this pretty blue button called create test is, of course, common sense, click it. Now, James, Blaze Meter works off scripts. And if you don't have scripts, it actually provides two tools for you. One of them is a recorder, one of them is actually the Chrome extension. If I look at the app we're using today, this is a fictitious uh, app that I've created. And basically it just has a list of doctors, has a list of claims, but more importantly is not what you're looking at, it's what's happening behind the scenes. It really is a three tier app with a Microsoft SQL backend uh, using Microsoft MVC with a uh, basic HTML5 front end, okay? Uh, I know it's a lot of techie information, but you're gonna see that in a few seconds. Now, with saying that, if I didn't have a script, I would download this handy dandy blaze meter recorder, hit record, do some actions, stop the recorder. See, so notice it's spinning. I can click on it, save as, and as cool as it is, it just created my JMeter script, my Selenium script, or both. Now, the good news about that is I could download it, actually open it up in JMeter, modify it if I want, and upload it again, or just do another recording. It's really that simple. So let's get back over here. So that's what the recorder is. You can do a, a multi-test, and if we have time, we'll look at that, but the concept of a multi-test is I can do two to as many tests I want. I don't know if there's a limitation there, maybe, but I can run them simultaneously together. And what that would give you is if you think about if I'm doing a web test, I'm doing a mobile test, and maybe I'm doing a thick client test, which good luck on that one, and I put all three of these together, then I could run these tests at the same time. So let's go ahead and click on performance. And now we back here at our scripts. Now, luckily I've already created the scripts for you. I have a Selenium script I'm gonna drop in there. I have a JMeter script. So here's my JMeter, my Selenium script. If I wanna look at it, right, it's right there. And it's really what I showed you. It really is just me recording, clicking around on the website. Okay, nothing fancy. We're gonna talk a little bit about the UI here. <clears throat> I'm gonna go with 500 users. Now remember, you don't go to 50,000, right? Keep it low, we're gonna do 500. Now I could do 5,000, but this is a simple test and that's not what we're talking about. My duration is what? If you remember what I said, 45 is a good one. Now ramp up, we talked about that. I wanna go from zero. So if I say zero in one minute, I'm at 500 users and then I'm running steady for you know my duration of the time. So what I do for best practice is maybe go 10 less than your duration and you'll see why. So if we do 45, let's do 35. Now the reason I'm doing that, this goes from zero minutes to 35 minutes. That's how long it should take to get all my users. And now I'm running at full load for 10 minutes. Now this is a good performance test. I could kick this off. I could run it, run a couple of them, add more users, so forth, so forth. But we're gonna go ahead and make it a stress test and I'm going to add my steps in there. So here it's gonna add 100 users, 200, and see it goes up as it weighs, right? Makes sense. Now. I said earlier, you can have up to 55 geo locations, right? So here, this is really neat. I don't know if that's a professional word, but I like the word because eh, Blaze Meter has all the cloud solutions you can imagine, Google, Amazon, you know, Microsoft, all the big names. So if I go down here to Microsoft and I say, you know, we'll run this one in Mumbai and I can control how many users. So 75 users are in Virginia, 25 are in Mumbai. 
<coughs> excuse me, sorry about that. I didn't mean to cough on you. But let's just keep this one simple. All right. Now, if we scroll down, we talked about KPIs. I can set up a failure for a KPI. For an example, I can say front page. Remember, what is a KPI? Key point indicator. It's not my metric, it's a key point. So what I wanna say, and I'm just picking something, so don't correct me if I'm wrong. But if I come down here and if I say, you know what? I wanna make sure my error count is less than zero. And if that happens, if it gets greater than zero, stop the test, because I wanna go see what that error is. Or I could say, you know, I want um, login page to be, you know, this is where I said don't correct me, because you gotta get your plus or minus correct on this one, um, because it's kind of tricky. But I'm just throwing numbers in there. Or I can say the whole thing, right? So <clears throat> this can send emails, alerts, all that good stuff. But we're gonna turn that one off. End user experience. I can come in here and say, hey, you know, what's Google up to? Now I can't really do this test because I don't own Google, but oops, you would actually put your site in here and we can create a user list based off of that. The best news is you don't have to do that because you have your script. Script took care of that for us. Integrations. I'm going to come back to this one in a second because we want to keep talking a little bit more and then hop back up. With Blaze Meter, I can change my settings inside my JMeter script here, uh, or at least the properties. So, you know, um, database connection equals, you know, whatever the database connection is. Um, so I can set that on the fly if I need to. The coolest part is remember earlier I said you can do multiple tests. I can set one test to be a poor web, uh, poor cell phone device, a G, and you know we're going to have maybe five percent package loss, right? Which is very common in your cell phones. So then I could rename this and call it, you know, cell phone one, and then we can clone this one to say duplicate, and then we can change our bandwidth again to be something else. Then we can run those two tests together. That's really nifty. So let's go ahead and turn this one off though, because that's not what we're talking about. We're gonna go ahead. I like to put my name here because I'm sharing this with Todd and we're gonna call it uh, integration uh, APM demo, okay? If I don't already have one. We'll put bad name and convention and put a one out there just in case. Now I can go into what we were actually talking about. So I'm going to click on this. I'm going to say, remember the med site we talked about? That's fair. If I hopped over to New Relic and pull it over here where you all can see it. And if I click here, I can see I got some transactions here in my New Relic, okay? And I can scroll down, I can see my throughput, so forth, so forth. So that's what we wanna to connect to. So if I go here, I'm gonna look at applications. Okay, and it takes a few seconds because it actually connects to it and it gets the list of metrics. I'm gonna click on my application. And this is the really cool part. Again, not professional, but it's realistic, it is. Look at all the metrics you can actually choose from. To me, that is really cool. So if I wanted to look at something like the controller, I can remember touch an MVC app, right? So here's my adjusters, here's my climate. Um, I should see claims in here. What if I wanna look at database stuff, right? So. Uh, may have to type in database. So data store, right? So the point is, it gives you a whole list of metrics. And I just come in here and pick, right? So I want this one, I want this one. And we're gonna talk about this in a few minutes, some best practices on that. But the point is I come here and pick my metrics, I say next, I give it a name and I say go. But I'm not gonna do that, because what we're gonna do is just pick some that I already did. Um, let's go next, let's kill this, um, let's, Start from scratch, Boom. open that up, because this is what I want is these. And I'm gonna pick my threads, my controllers. I'm just gonna pick a lot of stuff, okay? And I'm gonna say go. Now, here's the cool thing. I also care about my infrastructure. So I'm gonna pick on the infrastructure one. So now I have two, but that's not all I want. I also have a, a Broadcom APM. So I'm gonna pick to it as well. So in here, I'm gonna pick one I already have, right? So we'll just pick one and apply. So now I'm pulling metrics from three different APM integrations. Now these two are the same. If I have another one, which I think we have Dynatrace, then it doesn't matter. I can pull these metrics from any of these integrations that I'm connected to. Now, 
just to prove the point. Let's make sure everything's kind of good. We're good. We're good. Um, I could click run and I'm going to run my test. Now the good and the bad and the ugly, this test is going to run for 45 minutes. I don't think we have 45 minutes left on the call. So you're not going to see the end results, but that's why I have the tabs up here. So while that's running, I'm going to go show you what some of the results are. Now, I wanted to show you this because when you get to this page, you have a lot of good information. Okay, there's a lot of information here that you can get. We ran, you know, 10,000 users. That's how many hits I've got, errors, so forth, so forth. The timeline report, ignore this. We're going to come back to this in a few seconds. But the thing I want to show you here is I'm picking up my users, right? Now, the cool thing is when you're using Blaze Meter and you're doing a UI testing, functional testing or whatever, it will actually give you the scripts of your UI that you're doing. And not only that, but I get like what's called a stack trace. So I really can see where everything's going. So if it's my mobile device, like this is a pretty good spike here. So I'd want to know what's going on, right? So this is a mobile app. Um, and this is what the UI looks like. Sorry about the real estate though. I don't know why it's, I should have real estate, but I don't. And it's probably just because I'm doing this meeting. But I can see each call here as well. So that is a really, really good, useful tool if you're doing any kind of functional testing. Now, of course, I can go down to stats. The good thing about this is I can modify this and I can download this if I want to and send it to whoever, right? Um, so that's the good thing about this page. And I can also zoom in with, when I say zoom in, I mean, I can change my, my timeline here, okay? Um, Health Engine, this is about our testing services, not your server, but our testing services. Because the point is, how good is your test if our services aren't doing very well? So you can actually come in here and see those yourself. If you have errors, pretty common sense. We tell you what the errors are. We can see what the, you know, the error codes. If I want to see 404, if I want to see anything, we can get those there. And if it's still not good enough, I can still click on logs, right? Now this one's old. So let me go to one that's fairly new and we'll click on logs there. I just want to make sure I had a good web one so you can see what the UI looks like. But here, the same thing, errors, right? Um, here I can, well, pretty good. I didn't have any errors, but all joking aside, it's just a fake HTML site. Now with saying that, I can download the logs if I wanted to, even the JMeter logs, which is really cool. Um, and if I'm looking at somebody else's stuff, I can come here and see what the original configuration is. As you can see, we're using APM integrations here. That's, let's go look at this one. Same with it. So here we're using the new Relic ones and I can download the files if I wanna download those to modify those, okay? So it's a lot of good information, but that's BlazeMeter. Let's go over here to our report. Now, in this report, this grid, remember I told you you want to put one metric, multiple metrics together. That's a metric grouping. So if I come through here, this, I don't want to do UI just for now, so we're going to take that out. I don't care about my virtual users right now. I do care about my hits, okay? And I do care about my errors. Like I said, there's no errors, which is really cool. That hardly ever happens. And then my response time, okay? Those are the things I want to look at, but look at this. If I scroll down, I now have new relic. Remember, so when we did that, that coding, or not that connoting, but that connection, we told it what metrics we want to hit. So in this case, I want to hit my request per minute, okay? Um, maybe I want to see my standard deviations, maybe my average value, right? So these are just what I picked at that moment, okay? Um, average response time, Okay, notice it's different than the out-of-box response time because this is the database, right? The other one is using the JMeter script, so therefore it's more of a UI perspective, okay? So in this case, if my UI looked bad, but I clicked on my call count, my database call count was high, well, odds are I may have what? I may have a, re a memory leak, and we'll get to that soon because what that means is my database is used massively, but my UI isn't, okay? So what is my database doing then? So that may be something you would want to look at, like calls per minute, okay? And it's just really neat that you can put these on top of each other, okay? And that's the thing too, is if I have calls per minute that is really high, but my call count is very low, well, that tells me that the calls are not in sync, which means I've got something left open, right? That's usually what that means. Now, if I come down, I can look at my infrastructure. As an infrastructure person, I want to know How's my free space versus my used, right? This is disk. Am I running out of space? If I was, then maybe I should look at the logs. More importantly, if I look at the memory, free versus used, 
I'm good. Now, if this if this was active, I would expect this to move, right? There's not a lot going on with the app right now. So you get a lot of good information just by doing this merge. That is really cool. Now, I'm going to show you another perspective, and then we'll get back to the slide deck and move from there. But here, this is actually integrating with APM, okay? Again, DX APM used to be CA APM. It's now Broadcom APM. But here, I can even see my database calls, which is really cool. So I can see if a database call was taken longer than it should. Now, for security reasons, we don't tell you the value. I get asked that a lot, but we put question marks in there. So this is select top, but I can read this, right? Select top extinct ID as ID extinct modern hash table. So basically I'm doing a count here. Now I'm kind of running out of space, but I can highlight it. But the very cool thing is, as long as this is active, I can click here. And if I'm logged in, that's, that's a key thing. It will actually take me directly to the metric inside our uh, DX application. I keep wanting to say CA APM, but the name's changed. So, so I'll put that over there because it takes a few seconds to connect. And when it connects, I'll bring it back. But also down here, I have my GC heat, my bytes in use. So this is what I was saying. You want a saw effect. It climbs, it releases. It climbs, it releases. Climbs, it releases. Notice my bytes in use is equal, which tells me this is probably a virtual right so that's really cool um, but the point is you have so many metrics here just working on top and that's very important working together with your blaze meter uh, metrics right so i just want to bring this over so you didn't think i was lying um whoops i think i accidentally closed it but i was going to show you the apm but i think i accidentally closed it anyway it leads you oh no here it is Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So it brought me right to the metric that we were looking at, which is really cool. So with saying that, let's go back to the slide deck just for a few more minutes, or not even minutes, actually. And we want to talk about something very important that I've kind of touched base on is being proactive. So let me, so what is proactive, right? So we want to look at some metrics that can help you be proactive. Remember, 90% of the customers out there are always in the phase of putting out fires or they're putting new features. They really don't have the resources or the time to be proactive, to be honest with you. And the idea of proactive is getting the right metrics together, group together, set those KPIs, put them in a way to alert you or put them on the dashboard or something. Nobody's paying to sit there and stare at a screen all day just to watch the metric. Well, I can't say that. Somebody maybe. But usually you've got other things to do, especially architects, developers. But again, time versus effort. Do you have the right tools to get to the problem quickly? That's the key. Now, again, with Blaze Meter, I'm going to run a load test, possibly a spike test, maybe a spike test with a massive load test together. But I want to make sure I have the right metrics together to give me what I need. Um, years ago, and Todd's on the call, he can verify one of the biggest things customers always said is it's too much. There's too much data. I don't know what to do with it, so I'm not even gonna look at it. Well, that's the wrong thing to say. It's like saying I own a Ferrari, but it's too fast, so I'm not gonna drive it. No, learn to drive it. Learn these metrics, make them work for you. So here's some key pointers, right? So a linear growth and heat. What that means is really if you have, especially in the C++ days, if you have an API that has a listener, like it says here, and that listener's always open, that's the key. It's never closed. It doesn't have a way to be removed. Well, that can be a linear me, uh, memory leak, right? So exponential growth, it just means bigger. It's kind of the same thing, but this goes back to your data stores, right? So your vectors, your hash tables, your collections. Are you creating objects that you're never destroying, right? So as long as your objects are sitting there, and I know most people aren't using C++ in this way today, but Java is still the same way. You do have garbage collection and things like that. But again, if you miscode it bad enough, then it doesn't really fix the problem. And then you also have third parties, right? Who knows if they're doing the right thing? Now, real quick, the last one is growth and heap. That's another one. Oh, I'm sorry, resource memory leak. Uh, I read this for her, growth and heap. The truth is memory, a resource leak is probably the most common one when you look at your applications. And what that is, is a resource is left unclosed okay and i know all these are pretty close together is a very fine line but a good example of this one is back in the days with the microsoft application blocks they would create a database connection for you 
and they would open that connection, but then it would never get closed. So whenever you run the page again, it didn't use the same connection, it would open another, and then it would open another. And if you know how the memory works, it's allocating memory to these objects every single time, and pretty soon you're out of memory. Now we'll saying that, let me show you this uh, one more time. Um, sorry, as funny as it sounds, I'm really not a, oh, there it is. I was trying to find the stop button in PowerShell. Here we go. So if I go back over here, just one more time, and let's go ahead and create one. And if I scroll down, because I'm not really going to create one, but I go in here and click on this. And if I say I need my med site, right, and I care about the application, it gives a few seconds because it's really going out there and gathering those metrics. Okay, now here I have all the, well, I'm sorry, my application. You'd pick on the name of your application, and then it gets the list of metrics that's available. And that's really cool. But let me show you how to actually kind of wrap your hand around that. So we'll give it a few seconds to finish spinning. There we go. So here, if I'm an architect, I care about threads, right? So I can look at my threads, my available threads, my start threads, my threads in use, my available threads, right? So I can look at that. I can look at my memory. Do I care about the physical working set? And keep in mind, you could have more. Right now, the application is kind of a stale, which is not really being used. So there's not a lot of stuff. If I'm a developer and I want to know how my controllers are working, I can see the controllers, right? So you want to put these together to make them useful for you. You may be the person who only cares about database, okay? So maybe I just want to go in here and see how the database is doing. But the point is to the best practice to that theory is build it to work for you. Don't do what a lot of people do and just select everything because then you're going to spend too much time trying to get to the issue just because you're trying to weed through all the metrics that you have. So think about what you need, not what you have, okay? Again, do I have sockets? Probably not because it's not that kind of app, but I definitely have threads, right? Um, and I don't know if I can do CPU. Yeah, I can do CPU. And keep in mind, this is just this agent. I could do the infrastructure agent and get different information and put those together. So with seeing that, let me jump back over here one last time and let me figure out how to share this again, all right? So one thing I wanna talk about is Blaze Media Professional Services. Of course, we're here to help you because that's a lot of information, okay? You got best practices on Blaze Meter. You got all these integrations, you got all these metrics. And then most importantly, it all starts with a script, but we can help you with that. So we got scripting services, managed events, consulting sessions, training sessions. Um, we also have, like I said, the scripting services where we come in and we listen to your business user stories and we take those user stories and we put them in JMeter scripts for you. And then we help you build that out to your testing, right? We can also do hand-on-hand -hand delivering where we're walking through kind of a teaching you to do it as we do it, right? Um, we also manage events. You know, we calibrate, configure, and co-pilot. We can help you with that. But most important, whenever you have questions, we are here for you. Be it helping with these integrations, or if it's CI tools or your J meters or just whatever. Running regular Cadex meetings, reviewing script um, reviews as well, because you got to always review your scripts, right? Because if your script's broke, your test is broke. And then with saying that, we're going to move on over and we're going to go into questions. So Lauren, I'm going to hand it back to you at this point. Awesome. Thank you, Tim. Let's see what questions. questions we have. Okay, let's start off with um, how does the APM integration actually work with the transactions that BlazeMeter generates? Hey, Tim, this is Todd. Todd, maybe I can maybe I take that. That's a, that's a, that's a good question. Um, the, the, the thing I want you to get across here is that BlazeMeter, right, without the APM integration, the metrics you're getting really reflects everything from blaze meters perspective from the perspective of the load engine in apm you're looking at the internals of the application or the or the the, the operating system environment so what happens is there's nothing it's it's not um, that the transactions are feeding apm and apm's feeding it back to blaze meter what actually is happening here is that the APM integration is a poll. It just simply pulls the um, APM instance that you've set up for the metrics that you've requested 
on a periodic basis, whether it's every 15 seconds or every minute. So the value here is that it's very, you know, it's it it it, it it's able to merge the data from the blaze meter perspective with the APM perspective to make sure the environment's healthy for your testing that you're doing through blaze meter. So it's not that it, it's simply that we're setting up an integration with uh, with DX APM with uh, New Relic Dynatrace, and so you got to have your you got to know where to go. You got to have your URL for your uh, your um, APM instance. Uh, you got to have your token that you've set up so you have permission to request the information from APM, and then it merges it together. Now, w one thing I I think I'd better mention is is that if if you go in and you choose, let's say you're running a test against a certain site, right? And it's hitting a, an app server and that app server is hitting, or a web server is hitting the app server and the app server is hitting a database. You better be careful about choosing which integration you're gonna go with. Cause, cause APM, you know, when, when BlazeMeter simply pulls the APM, you could be pulling against the, the wrong agent or the, the the wrong instance of APM, and but it will still merge it together. So you just have to be aware of making sure that when you set up that configuration, that that'll line up with your test. All right. So then then the information is more meaningful. So if you're hitting, uh, you're, if you're running a, a ten thousand user test and you're really ramping it up, but you're not the APM metrics aren't reflecting it. Just double check to make sure that uh, you have your configuration right, that you're pointing to the right instance, because it'll bring data together. Now, Tim earlier mentioned in his, or he was showing, he was in one part of the demo, he, he so showed uh, New Relic, uh, New Relic infrastructure, and he showed the APM agent. You know, that's, you know, that, that's good to show the complexity or the, 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 the extensibility of the configuration. But in all likelihood, you're just going to go to one APM instance to get your metrics for your for your app. So hopefully, I answered that question. And um, if there's just one thing I want you to get get out of that that part of it is, is that it's it's simply pulling the um, or requesting metrics on it on it on a, on a predetermined time that is that is configured by the blaze meter integration you don't have any opportunity to go in and tweak it but so that's how that's how that um, uh, it works hopefully i answered that question awesome and thanks Thank for letting Todd. me speak tip 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 tip, <laughs> tip likes to tip likes to take the take the reins and go sorry so, about that. that's great that's great Love it. To drink. Give me a chance to take a sip of my coffee. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> <laughs> All right, looking at some more questions here. Um, how much overhead is there to the APM integration? Oh, that's it. Well, okay. So when I was mentioning before, it's simply it's simply a poll. So it's you're not getting you're not pulling APM metrics for every single get and put and transaction that's going through. So it is it is very lightweight in terms of the overhead uh, that is presented to blaze meter. Um, and it, it really doesn't affect the, the app itself because what is it doing? It is simply going to your APM instance and say, give me the metrics. So it really doesn't affect your app at all either. Um, so so it, all it is doing is communicating with APM instance and say, give me those metrics. So it, it is very lightweight. Um, in terms of that, it, it does it does add a little more to because you're collecting more metrics. Uh, Blaze Meter is uh, uh, collecting that and present be able to present it, but um, it's very lightweight. It's very lightweight. I don't have a specific number for you, but hopefully that helps. Great. All right. Let's see. Anything does Blaze else? Meter? Yeah, let's see. Does BlazeMeter store the APM metric values to ret retrieve later, even if the APM tool lose the granularity? Yes, because we we pull the information into BlazeMeter, and that's where that's where it's maintained with the with the the, the report for the test. 
it doesn't continue after the fact. I, like and like Tim showed, he went back to a test that was run a while ago, and it could have been aggregated out, right? But because BlazeMeter pulled those metrics in, it has it for historical purposes, right? So you can, yes, it's still there, and the integration only occurs when the test is running. Now, Tim did show where he could jump over to APM because there was a link there, and that's and that's fine. But but um, uh, it's um, the the data the metrics obtained from APM will be remain with the Blaze Meter files. Okay, thank you. That was that was a good question. I like I liked it. Yeah, I uh, probably have time for one or two more. Um, so let's see. Someone asked, can we extract the metrics along with the timeline from the timeline report chart? Yes, you can. You can download that um, uh, from the timeline report. Whatever is available through the, through the timeline report, you can extract that. Well, you know what? I, I need to, I'll need to double check that one. I usually don't, but... Um, that's a good question. And I think you can also get them through the APIs too. You just have to know which ones you're calling. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anything else? Well, I, I think that's about it for questions. Um, like I mentioned before, we'll be following up with the on-demand version of this webinar. So um, watch out for that in your emails today or tomorrow. And then if there are any follow-up questions, feel free to respond to that email. And yeah, I just wanna thank you, Tim and Todd. Um, that was great and really informative. So appreciate you guys. Well, you're welcome. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, my pleasure. So. All right, thanks all.